everyone. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Abby. Hi, Tori. Hi, Jill. <laughs> If you would like to, please um, don't forget to put your name or, I mean, where you're from in the chat. We always like to see where you're coming in from and a little bit about what's going on. We're all here on the West Coast, or most of us, and we're all sweltering. Um, I'm up here in Vermont. I guess I I think we were being serenaded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> Sounded nice. <laughs> sound, sound nice. Cambridge, Massachusetts. Rochester, I just read something about Rochester that uh, was interesting. It sounds like Rochester has um, gotten very lively of late. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, not good well, news though. It's not good news? No, we're interesting news, but yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I was thinking of, uh, I, I, I was reading something and then, cause somebody else had just told me they'd driven through Rochester and it was, seeming very lively and artsy and interesting and that there was a lot oh going yeah that, that part yeah. yes but except yeah. that our mayor husband was stopped for drag and things like that oh i missed that <laughs> I've been not out of the loop <laughs> i guess maybe that's a mark of uh, honor anymore in new york if you've got politicians that are getting in trouble <laughs> All right, everyone, let's see. I suppose that we should get started. Um, if you would like to, please turn your cameras on. I love to see your faces. Everybody likes to see each other. It's part of the party atmosphere. Um, hi, everyone. I am Nora Swan, and this is my very first time being the host. So please forgive me if I'm a little bit rusty at it. Um, I am the less extroverted uh, half of a hat making duo up here in Vermont, and I'm very happy to be here. Um, I uh, make hats, obviously, up here in Vermont for different, um, as many different personalities as we can. We try and make them so that if you are an outgoing person, you've got hats. If you're whatever mood you're in, you'll have hats. And so um, this has been such a wonderful thing for us to meet people online and see each other's faces and just um, it's made us feel very connected to all of you and so we really appreciate that. Um, let's see, where are we so we can, uh, let's see. So I wanted to call your attention to um, our delightful and magnificent admin person. It is Francesca Vitali. And uh, please, if you have any comments or questions to her problems, you can direct message her in the chat. I want to call your attention again to the chat. And um, that's where we can make our comments about different things that we're seeing, um, that sort of thing. And it's wonderful to see all of your faces and to see the different um, expressions that you've got as you react to people. So please do keep those cameras on. And um, we have today six fantastic artists. The first artist that we're going to hear from is Suzanne Schwartz from Suzanne Schwartz Jewelry. The second one is Gina Panorfi, who's a fiber artist, um, quite extraordinary. Uh, then uh, Laura Jacklich from Laura Jacklich Jewelry, Crystal Kodada of Crystal Kodada Bags, Rebecca Scott from Shepherd's Run Jewelry and Carla Goodian from Carla Goodian Art and Design, a co-founder. Um, so 
this party, how it's going to bloom is we are going to hear from each of the artists one at a time for a uh, presentation. And then if time allows, uh, there's pre uh, submitted questions that I'll ask. And uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we will definitely get to them in the afterwards. Um, and we'll have a little time to turn our mute off and talk to everyone and uh, just sort of schmooze a little bit. And so that's fun. We call that the after party. So um, without further ado, I would like to introduce Suzanne Schwartz, our first artist. Can we first do a little toast? Oh, the toast. I'm so Yes. Excited. I'm all. <laughs> we need we a little bit of refreshment. Yes. This may be a group effort. <laughs> Cheers, yes. everyone. Cheers, everybody. All right. So I'm sorry. Now let's try and go to Suzanne. Suzanne. Hi everyone. Can you hear me? No. My we're just setting up. Uh, there we go. Hi everyone. So I am doing something a little different today. I am shooting from my studio. So it's my first time. So I'll probably run out of time. But just kind of wanted to show you where I work every day and kind of you can see some different pieces of what I'm doing. So as many of you know, the majority of my work is all stitched. So I will drill little holes and sew through with either fine silver or 22 karat gold. And I wanted to show you, so this is my, in my stitch collection, this is my sew weave necklace. And there is also the, uh, so we earrings and I just wanted to show you kind of so that's them stitched stitched and then this is a before picture of them when I stitch I use fine silver wire and you can see right here here are some of my wires and they're all different thicknesses here's a, a freeform bracelet um, which is stitched and then you can see this was, is a bigger one, which is um, not stitched yet. And when I do stitch, I'll use different um, thicknesses. And also I will use uh, 22 karat gold wire. You can see this is an unfinished piece. And these pieces are part of the interwoven squares collection that this is a bracelet. Uh, that will eventually turn into either this piece. Each piece has a certain size, or it will turn into uh, this necklace. And to show you this on, oops, over my cross. So this is it. And I'm always looking with these pieces to um, intersect them at not at perfect angles, but really this unperfect angle that looks almost like it was haphazardly put together, but it's very purposely put together. Um, and so I just wanted to show you uh, over here, I have, this is the finished product and this is the earring and I'll just show it to you um, on. And this is the cluster in the layered collection, the clustered square small earrings. And I'm gonna show you the pieces kind of to show you the process of how I make it. So I'll start with um, our gentle and I'll cut it out with this pattern. Um, and I'll show you kind of that later. And um, then I have all these little squares that I make and I will stitch with wire. Some of them will be oxidized. And what I'll do then is after forming, meaning like putting a nice bend in here and drilling out the holes, I will place the little squares inside where I want to, and then I'll turn it over and flame up uh, the back. You can see sort of here how that's done. So that's like a little look at, um, you know, that uh, kind of process. 
So I also have um, kind of a bracelet that I'm wearing and I'm about to move over to my bench. Uh, this is the cluster bracelet. Here's another one. And what I wanted to show you on my bench is my chairs. So here is the bracelet finished. And then to start it, what I'll do is I will um, cut it out. I'll drill holes in the end. And then to get the tension so that it snaps back um, by hammering this in place, I'm just gonna bend it. By hammering this in place, I will, by constantly hitting it, I will get this really nice uh, tension on it. So um, that's some of how I show you that. And then I wanted to show you um, my pearl earrings. So these have a 22 karat fused gold on it. And the way I get that gold on these pearls is by actually taking down my uh, scraps from my 22 karat gold ends of like a, you know, all my stitching. And I will melt it down into this piece. And then what I'll do is I will take um, a grinding tool that you can see here, and I'll put it on here and I will grind it and I will grind it down into dust. And let's see if you can see that. And then I will place it on the silver at my torch, which is um, in my garage, because this is my home studio. And I will uh, fuse it onto there and then oxidize it. And it will become, you know, an earring like this with the fused gold onto it. It's a pretty long process and kind of get, you don't quite know what you get until you oxidize it. Another technique that I'll use is, uh, this is kombu. And these are the edge earrings that have stitched the edge in 22 karat. But I'll take 24 karat gold and I'll show you a piece I'm working on. And I'm going to take this 24 karat gold and make it very thin. I'm going to make it this eventually, this piece will be so thin that I'll go from here to about here. And then I will cut it out in the pattern that I want. And then I will bond these together through heat. And that's actually what kombu is called. Um, Wow, so to show you a little bit of uh, my other uh, process here. So this is kind of my hammering station, my rolling mill, and I'm gonna go back to my press. Before I showed you that I had uh, this, which is, um, I am blanking on what it's called. Uh, um, I, so I make this once I have the shape I like, and then I will put it in this press and I will cut out this piece. And then there's a lot of sanding that goes involved, gets involved in it. And eventually this will, well, that's the long earring, um, but this is the short version. That's so amazing. So it's it'll turn into this. To see, I feel like I'm seeing, um, <coughs> the connection to the fiber arts in a, in a new way and a connection to sort of um, like you're making patterns in a way and you're putting them together and layering. It's, it's, it's really wonderful to see insight into your process a little bit. This is really, really, really cool. So thank you. I'm very influenced by the textiles and by all the different, you know, the processes are important to making it all the same. I figure I'm out of time. The fluidness, well, we've got, to, uh, actually, you're right. You have gotten out of time. I wanted to hear all about your inspiration. We're going to have to wait until the after party to hear what's inspired you. Okay, and I also took out my pearls because I do have the yeah. pearl collection. So or I can show that as well. All right, that sounds wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I look forward to that. All right, so the next artist we have is the fabulous Gina Pinorfi. Hello, everyone from Chicago. Uh, thanks for joining all of us on this lovely Saturday. Um, I am here today. I want to talk. Uh, most of you, if you've been here before, you know that I work cross between uh, felt making and then I'm also a batiker. So 
I want to focus on batik today just because it is a little bit warmer out and as we shift into the summer months, um, felt and wool becomes kind of an afterthought or something that you may use if you're cold uh, in air conditioning. Um, so I will briefly, for those of you who have been to um, this before, I want to just briefly show you the size. I'm working on something right now on the table, which is not something that I normally have going on while I'm uh, doing one of these events just for kind of the fluidity of how I work. But this piece here, if you follow me on Instagram, um, I showed kind of what is laying underneath all of that wool there. And I know it's dark, so you can't really see the detail from here, but it's actually about five layers of fine merino wool that are stacked upon um, some pieces of felt that I've already made and then cut into a design. So if you go to my um, Instagram page, you can kind of see what the process is for that. And then uh, moving right into all of this beauty that I'm surrounded by, <laughs> these are all uh, hand-painted patterns. I am wearing uh, my silk top and I wanna show this piece kind of in the round so you can see that it's two-sided. Um, it can be worn so that this is forward facing or you can spin it around and you can wear this um, so that this piece is actually in the front. And I make these tops. Uh, you can see the piece that I have on is a hand dyed piece of silk gauze. And I also use different weights of silk in this. So I have a silk viscose, which is um, a really gorgeous textured silk. So it is has sort of like a linear uh, weave to it. You can see it looks sheer here because of the light, but the, um, the texture of this across, I don't know if you can kind of pick that up from where the batik is modeling the dye. The, you can kind of see there's a bit of a texture to it. And it just drapes really gorgeous on and feels like more of like a, a linen than a silk. Some people don't wear silk because it can be, everyone has their thing about fabric. So this is kind of a great piece that, a great weight of fabric that's in between a silk and a cotton. And then I work with, um, I got this really, I recently purchased some really beautiful uh, textured black silk chiffon from Korea. And it is difficult to see here, but it has kind of a vertical grain to it. I don't know if you can pick that up, but kind of. Um, this is a little bit, I love black sheer anything. I think it's really kind of sexy and sophisticated without being overt. And you can see this top, is has the pattern on the front and then can work as well as like a solid in the back. I color block everything. So all of the colors that you see, I'm dyeing all of that first and then I kind of piece everything together, including details like this bias here is actually cut from pieces of the batik. So I try to use minimal waste in my process. And then um, everything is finished really finely and meticulously with French seams. So these are all uh, hand washable. They're great now that everyone is getting a little stir crazy and is booking vacations that they've been waiting to go on. Um, these tops are great for that. They basically pack down to nothing. They're hand washable and then you can hang them and they dry in about 15 minutes in hot weather. Um, the third weight of silk, which is, this is the, I love crepe. I love texture on anything and crepe de chine. Uh, some of it is stone washed and this has, I'll show you up close to see if you can kind of get a little feel. There's a slight sheen to it. I don't like super shiny silks, um, but this has this really light texture to it. And then this piece, I um, love this dot. It reminds me of kind of a 1950s vintage, um, polka dot. So uh, this is, again, you can wear it backward or forward. And then little details like this one has the bias on the inside and then again on the sleeves. And then moving on to, um, I do have a few tank tops in that really gorgeous silk viscose. So this is just a plain piece here dyed. I'll kind of spin you here. And then it has adjustable ties on the top here, these I have photographed. I don't think they're on my website if my brain is working correctly. They will be as we kind of shift into this hotter weather and people are looking to wear as little as possible. But 
the drape and feel of this is really, you can see here how light it is and how it moves. And then I've paired that with one of my felted silk and wool scarves. Um, this style is good for covering your shoulders, taking a little bit of the chill out of the air if you're at a restaurant or if you're wearing something really plain. You know, if you're going to a wedding and you're wearing all gray or something, this could be a really nice little touch for you. And this is the um, horizontal block style. You can see what I have available on the site. And then lastly, I'm really um, excited about this. This is the first piece that I've made in this. And for those of you who need something long or like prefer long things, um, I've just stepped into doing a long silk dress shirt. So if anyone, I see that there may be a question, Dory, if you want to ask me, feel free to jump in uh, while I'm talking. Um, but, there, there are a number of questions. People are loving the colors and the, the silk and the drape, and this is really exciting. I, I totally feel like the seasons have shifted, and this is like just pulling that into such good highlight. Yeah. Um, so there were some questions. Uh, one mm -hmm. question that people were asking or ha ha has been asked is how long it takes you to do one batik? So I work from um, white silk and it takes usually about five days from for me to get the pattern on and then to build the layers, which take uh, overnight one layer at a time. So depending upon the intricacy of the pattern and how many colors are in the batik, and then I have to remove all of the wax, um, which is a process in itself. And then I have to cut into them. And then I have a woman here who is an amazing seamstress. She actually, I cut everything out and then she sews everything together for me. Wow. So every garment takes over, you know, usually two to three weeks for one piece. And with each batik, I only get two or three garments. So they're very bespoke and very special. It's like wearing a paint the colors that you're getting are just so wonderful and rich mm. and uh, just with so much nuance to the colors. They're not oh. just sort of, you know, one thing or another. I really like the way you've layered colors there. It's really beautiful. Thank you, Nora. Yeah. Um, and then another question that uh, was asked is about the process of custom ordering, what that would look like, how long it might take, how you would um, yeah. have a custom idea. So for custom, depending upon if it's silk or wool, uh, if it's a felted piece, usually takes two to three weeks. And for batik in terms of sizing, I work all in usually one size. Things can be adjusted based upon measurements. And those would take probably about eight weeks to order something um, particular just because of the, um, you know, start. To, it's really start to finish from a white piece of silk to a finished garment. Incredible. It's really incredible. Wow. Well, thank you so much. This has been really very. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Like summertime is here. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and we are going to move on now. Thanks, to, Lori. Whoop, hi, Laura. Laura Jacklich. Hi. Um, I'm Laura from Laura Jackets Jewelry, and I'm here in my Somerville, Massachusetts studio, and I make. Um, pieces out of wood that I've inlaid with polyurethane. Um, and they start out as pieces of wood like this, and then I'll turn them into a block like this. So I'm cutting into the wood, and then each one of these lines is a cut, and then I'll pour in a color. Um, it's sort of like a layered process one at a time. And then from there, um, you can actually see here that the colors go all the way through the piece there. It's not just a surface treatment. Um, from there, I'll cut out a shape and then I will make the jewelry. Um, so last time I had some questions about brooches and so I thought I'd wear one. It's not usual for summer, but I actually really love it with like a, a dress. And my little brooch pro tip is if you are wearing um, something that doesn't support a brooch, you can add a little bit of felt or thicker fabric behind. So um, it won't fall forward. If you're wearing something lighter like Jersey. Um, and this one is actually ebony, ebony wood. Um, I also wanted to show you this week some of these mini hardware pieces. They're kind of this delicate, um, 
piece and I actually make all the findings myself. I was trained as a, traditionally as a jeweler, but I love being able to um, bring that kind of traditional craftsmanship to unconventional materials. So this one is really fun. It actually layers really well too. And I have this one in a bright finish as well. This is the oxidized sterling silver. And I have this one in a bright sterling silver finish. And another great thing about wood is that it's super lightweight. So you can wear, you know, large statement earrings like these, these are the hinge earrings, um, lots of great movement and you can barely even feel them. So if you have sensitive ears like I do, they're perfect. Um, another one I wanna show you, I haven't shown these necklaces before. These are the bar necklace um, and they actually, you can see that the chain goes right through and you can pull it through. It has this really beautiful handmade clasp here. And this one's fun if you like to play with your jewelry. Um, another great lightweight summer piece. And those have kind of evolved into these crescent necklaces. So this is similar idea. They have um, the chain that goes all the way through um, and this handmade clasp. And this is just a really fun modern shape. And I had some larger rings I wanted to show you. So all of the rings um, I've signed on the back, or you can see signed and dated. These are really, they're just a single finger, but they're just like a really fun statement piece, especially for the summer uh, when you've got your hands out. <laughs> and let's see, I also wanted to show you these. Uh, these are a smaller version of the hinge earrings and they have a, a back plate here, a sterling silver back plate. And they just have really nice movement for summer. And then I also really love using the repurposed ebony like I have with my brooch. You can see it just polishes up to this really beautiful satin finish and it really makes the colors kind of stand out on here. This one is ebony and walnut and it has handmade veil. And then if you like post earrings, these ones are a really fun shape here. They just kind of frame your face like so. Then, what else do I have here? Again, my favorite um, is really big hoops. <laughs> They're super, super lightweight. These ones are also ebony and you can see this really like punchy cobalt blue, which I really love. And, you know, these are just a nice little click into place and a great statement piece with like a summer dress. Um, Those are so, so much fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I can see that they really go together quite well. Like there's a lot, there's there's um, so many variations on themes. And so I could see that you could just play around with coordinating for hours and hours. Yeah, they're definitely designed to mix and match. So I like to kind of pull out one color or a type of wood and then use that as a jumping off point. So here I kind of use pink. I have this light pink here. Um, and this gray, and it kind of picks oh, up the pink yeah. in this piece, even though they're very different, they can still complement each other. Um, you know, and then you can also mix pieces from the same block. So this one is um, actually from leave the same block as these. They have very similar color. But you can also mix it up. Um, let's see, this one. These ones are complementary, but they're not you know, exactly the same. So if you pick up teal and peach, you get a really nice that. Yep. set there. And you can always email me and I'll help you figure out a good match if you want to mix and match your own set. That's really, really cool. And there's, I like the way that the lines are different thicknesses and they sort of, you can play around with that too. It's got, gives a, 
impression of facetedness, even if it's not a faceted thing, that's really cool. How in the world did you come up with this process? Um, so I actually, I was trained traditionally as a jeweler, as I said, um, but while I was in school, I took a class on alternative materials and they wanted us to do some experiments. Um, and I was just kind of playing around with the wood and the polyurethane resin and thinking what I could do to put them together. And I just love this kind of, it's like almost like a painting. It's very graphic um, and kind of gesturally, but you can find a composition within, you know, the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, where is your wood sourced from? So all my wood comes from, um, it's sustainably sourced cutoffs from other woodworkers. These are from a wood turner in Brooklyn. You can see these are the corners that he's cut off a turning blade. I also work with a guitar maker um, in Somerville who sends me pieces they can't use. And then if I do end up purchasing anything, it's always sustainably sourced cutoffs um, from companies that are um, using really uh, sustainable forestry practices. That's really cool. Is it sort of like, um, it almost reminds me of um, making a quilt or something. And do you have, is it yeah. so a piece it, and then you cut it in different angles and then? Yeah, so it'll start out, you know, really something like this. I'll sand these uh, flat and leave a little bit of room. And then each time I cut in um, wood, it kind of adds something and the composition starts to more. That's really very interesting. Cool, so you're sort of um, uh, improvising in a way. Yeah, it's like, um, it's a little bit of experiment, but I also try to make it fun and sophisticated at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I can see that, that's wonderful. Well, thank you very much, that was really fun. We'll have to come back and see a little bit more in the after party. And um, we are going to move on now to Crystal Kodada. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Nora. Thanks so much. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today um, on this Saturday. Thank you so much for supporting all of us artisans. Um, for those of you, of you who don't know me, my name is Crystal Kodada. I'm a handbag designer. Um, I have a passion for handbags and for inspiring and empowering you beyond the purse. That is just my absolute um, mission in life, is to inspire and empower you. Um, so all my handbags are made in Union City, New Jersey. Um, I do all the des my de design specifications here in my home studio. So when I'm designing, I'm all about like, okay, what are the features and the benefits um, at, that, that can make your life more like stylish and more just empowering? So I wanted to actually take you through, um, I'm doing a new collection coming up, so I'm really excited about that. And all my handbags are made in Union City, New Jersey. Uh, so I've been doing this for seven years. I went to FIT for accessory design. Both my parents met and fell in love at FIT. My dad does production, so he's helped me with the marketing and I mean, the actual product development side. My mother was in design. So I got definitely both jeans, fashion runs in my jeans. Really. So here I go. I want to go into um, my first collection is called the Experience Collection, which I uh, debuted um, during Fashion Week uh, 2014 when I started my business seven years ago. I'm a one woman show. You can see my dog debut, <laughs> just chilling. Um, so here I am. I'm going to go into um, my next collection, um, and I will also then go into my after I'm done, go into like my um, existing collection. But just want to give you like some behind the scenes. So. Here we go. This is um, my first one, one of my sketches, my new sketches that I'm thinking about producing, and it's a crossbody. Um, but you can see that it has both these pockets here. That actually is inspired from this bag, my original um, Love It for Sight Limitless Tote. And you can see all of the like actual functional pockets. So I'm, you know, thinking about creating um, another version, but like as a crossbody. So and I'm going to think about coming up with different materials and colors. So I welcome you, you know, um, if you ever want to get in touch and get like, you know, give me ideas of materials and everything. I'd love to hear from you. You can like just go on my site and, you know, we can chat. And so that's that style. And then there's this one. I think I'm going to call this one maybe like Liberty crossbody and it's just like a smaller crossbody for your cell phone. And it has that same detailing. Um, you can see like the three ring bar in my style, the invincible clutch, um, which has again that three ring bar and it's um, you know, a glove clutch you can wear on either side. Um, 
So you can kind of can see the detailing where that came from, like this three ring bar, you know, with this crossbody style that I'm um, thinking about doing, maybe definitely for summer. Then we have, this is the definitely, I'm very psyched about, this is the unstoppable, or I'm sorry, infinity crossbody. It's a circle style, so it's a very like vintage and it has three zippers, which is like for like Trinity, kind of like a really cool, um, just like symbolism from it. So it is a circle. So um, all my bags are also handcrafted with leather. So this bag will be um, definitely in full grain leather or also maybe a canvas or a mushroom leather is um, some other ideas that I'm thinking about or pineapple. It's really bringing in sustainability as well. So I've started off as leather, but now I think I'm gonna start going into more like um, other materials too that are lightweight and also really good for the environment. So, but I do source all my leather here in, um, in the US. And then this one is a, um, it's like a fanny pack maybe, but you can also wear it as a crossbody. So again, it has that, that like same iconic like shape here. Um, kind of like that curves and edges. I have that in like all my styles because I'm all about like feminine shapes. And, um, you know, again, I love the curves and edges, like the functionality aspects too, um, bringing that in. So then we go into one of my just plastic designs that are available on my site right now. It's a timeless toe. And it's just a nice like open toe. Um, everything, it's kind of like sleek. Where you can like, you know, again, put your iPad in here. Um, this one is I actually is the stone gray and it's our best selling color and you can kind of like really dress it up, dress it down. You can also put like, you know, your laptop. So I really think about, I really think about like in all my designs, like what, what would my, like, what do you need in your lifestyle? Like what kind of things can you put in your bag that you need that can like take you on to your like adventurous, like, you know, life. So then there's the free and back bag, which is my new design, which is, has a pocket here that you can like, I'm all about pocket placements um, and incorporating that in all the designs. And so this is a really great travel bag. When you open it, it's um, you put, like your water bottle and you know, there's a back pocket here. So all about bringing in adventure, like styles that are sleek and can really just like take you on it and it just like, an adventure. So it also has like this, this like curved edge, which I always try to also make prominent in a lot of my designs too. Like this, this will actually lay very comfortable on your back. So that. And then, yeah, just so these are all the colors that I'll be um, bringing in to the new collection. So my new collection is going to be um, just like a bunch of colors right now in this of uh, my invincible clutch. And then definitely going forward adding in new styles because so just to kind of keep it really fresh and interesting. So this is the black that you can pre-order um, soon. So I'm making that and I'm making the style in black and then in different like colors. I so, love then, those colors. That's so yeah. exciting. Thank you. Materials so exciting. And colors. That's going to be so great. Yeah. Wow. Sure. I love yeah. how um, I feel like designing for especially for the body which a lot of all of us really are doing is such an act of um it's almost you have to be empathic in a way you have to really put yourself uh, into the body and the experience of the yes. people that you're designing for and i really see that strongly in your design oh, thank you so much i love that i love that you're so empathic absolutely it's all about like the, the vibrations and energies and frequencies and i love putting that into all my designs as well and then like as you're wearing them and you get this like rush of like really empowering inspiring energy so it's cool yeah. that I'm able to put my like I, my energy literally like like physically into the bags and for you to get a hold yeah and they feel it, it you feel when you've got a great bag or a great anything like that jewelry all of it you feel so seen you feel understood when you get you, know, you wear something beautifully designed it just makes you feel like okay somebody got me Yes, the expression. It's expression yeah. of that. Like exactly. I love that. Yeah. It's all that individuality. Like yeah. really showcasing that, like, it, like spotlighting. I love that. Absolutely. That's what we're that's that's what we're all about here. Yeah, totally. And I see that very strongly in you. All right. Um I would like now to move on. Thank you so much. Your stuff is gorgeous. I can't wait to see 
the new colors and new materials yeah. and, and all of that new design work. My God, you've just been on oh. fire. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> all right, everyone, next we have the love Rebecca Scott of Shepherd's Run Jewelry. Greetings, everyone. Hello. Thanks for coming up today, being here. Um, showing a little less work today um, for everyone who has seen me the last couple of times I've been here. Wanted to focus a little more on some of the things that have been working well for me that um, I've been playing around with a little more recently. One of my favorite things to do is, so I work with silver a lot. I use Argentium silver and either 14 karat gold fill or 14 karat gold. Um, and I've been using a lot of those in combination and just kind of playing around with, with things that have worked well and playing on themes with them. A um, couple of things. This little guy here is the, the half and half halo drop, one of my best selling earrings. I finally made a bigger size. So if anyone wants to have a bigger pair of earrings, I think we're all enjoying wearing big earrings right now and we're going out to celebrate a little bit more. Um, all of these, I've been wearing big, big earrings with masks as well, um, whether we're, we're still wearing them or not. Um, so that, that's one kind of fun thing that, that also I have one little oops. I had a whole bunch of stuff ready to upload to my website today and I had a whole massive cloud crash. So um, there are some things that will be on my website later today that aren't quite there yet. But if you're looking for these, these are on there. So it's the half and half halo drop just in a larger version. Another thing that um, a lot of people love is my paperclip necklace. Um, this is a half and half version as well. So it's half silver, half uh, 14 karat gold fill. So I make the links individually and then um, just play around with it. So you can, you have either bright silver or oxidized silver. I like the oxidized because you can really see the contrast in the metals. You can wear it with the clasp at the back. So you have like a really direct contrast you can wear it so you have the gold at the front, the silver at the back, other way around. So you, you can really play around with this a lot. Another fun thing I like about this, so this is the asymmetrical paper clip. Because of the nature of the chain, you can clip the, the hook anywhere you want. So you can wear it like a Y necklace, you can make it short, you can have it so it's a choker at the front and you have a lovely tail going down the back. So. That's a fun new thing. I, I've done these forever and a day in just silver, but I, I really like the contrast of having both metals in one piece. Um, I oxidized that one so you can, you can really see the difference. Um, this is another gold and silver piece. Oh, sorry, I'm having a lot of blowout with the lights, but I don't know if you can see, but all of these little dots are cut out and textured with my favorite, favorite hammer, which anyone who's seen me before knows I use my grandfather's old hammer that was an old construction hammer, which has a really junky messed up face, but gives beautiful texture when, when you hammer it metal. So I have argentium silver hinges on the pieces, which gives just a little extra contrast and detail on the front. Um, and again, all of my little chains, I make them with an adjustable clasp, so you can have a little play with the length. So I give, it's about another two inches of play on that. Another fun one, these, these are newer for me. I like big but light. These are my shimmer drops. Those are silver, oxidized silver and, and gold fill. I do them in all silver. Um, haven't done them in, in all gold yet, but I think those would be really fun too. Um, if you're interested, just shoot me a line and I can figure it out. Oh, here are the little earrings that go with this necklace. These were the first pair of studs I ever started to make. And when I do shows in person, these are the thing I still sell every single show, no matter what. Um, they're my buttoned up studs earrings and people just love them. So I keep making them. Um, what else is a fun thing? Oh, the, the earrings that I'm wearing, I started these recently. I used to make a version of them where they were just wire wrapped. I was not pleased with those. 
now I make them so they're soldered and hinged on the back. They've got a lot of fun like articulation and movement to them. Um, so those are, those are my pangolin earrings. They remind me of pangolin scales. And these are them in an oxidized version with a gold oh uh, drop on the bottom. Those. Thank you. I, I like movement and articulation. This is another, these aren't up on the website at the moment, but they will be. I used to make a thousand of these and then I stopped for a long time because they kill my eyesight. Um, but I love them there. I, I make a drops of mercury necklace as well. So I call it drops of mercury. Everybody says, oh my God, they're not mercury. No, they're not. Just the little balls remind me Hold of them. mercury. Oh yeah. Those are um, cool. And these actually have carat gold. It's 14 carat gold up at the top for posts mm -hmm. um, because I had some left over from a ring I was making. Um, I can do them in all silver. I love doing these in oxidized because you really get to see the detail of all the little drops. And again, there's just, a, it's, these are all individually beaded on a chain. So there's a lot of articulation and movement, but they're super light and just really kind of fun, slinky, sassy. If you're someone who likes to play with their earrings, these are very tactile and fidgetable too. I'm getting such a strong feeling of water from so many of your like various abstracted things that water does, like drops of water and flowing of water. And there's all kinds of, it's very interesting. I like how um, you've simplified and like clarified things you. you know in in the natural world and so I, I go for simple and minimal and a lot of my inspiration is from the coast from rocks from water from stones i grew up in ireland i know i don't have the accent anymore but i grew up there and walked along the largest natural bay in europe to go to my train every day mm -hmm. um so there, there is a lot of coastal I, I use a lot of a lot of pebble shapes yes in my yes. work as well yep. Um, so thank you for picking up on that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's very, it's, it, you get to the essence of, of things in such a nice way. Ooh, let's see that one. So this, this is one of um, my pebble pieces as well. Most of what I was showing today is um, the, the mixed metal, but this one I just love throwing in because it's a just, it's a really fun piece. And again, I like to, to do large, but light. So I hammer everything not only for the texture, but also to, to give it strength so I can use a lighter weight metal. So it can be big, but not drag you down. So um, you can, again, that looks like wet pebbles. It's not just pebbles, but it's like water shining, you know, the sun hitting the, pe the wet pebbles is what yep. I mean. So there's water, really a lot of water in your stuff, in my opinion. And there's, there's um, I oxidize this lightly so you could pick up on more of the detail in it as well. You get more of the texture, the hammered texture. I think I um, see your grandfather's hammer texture, yeah. Yeah, I, I use that hammer on literally probably 95% of everything that I make. Um, it gives it it gives it texture, it gives it character, and it also gives it strength. So it's, it's, a, it's a dual purpose. And from his hands to your hands and then to the bodies of the people who wear your stuff. It's really neat. Exactly, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. That was really fun. And we are going to move on to the wonderful, our darling, Carla Goodian. Hi. Hi How is everybody? I'm so happy to be at another art party and so honored to be with such amazing artists. I'm Carla Goodian of Carla Goodian Art and Design. And I make a line of hand colored etchings and goods and gifts for the home, including the print Dory was just kind enough to show everybody. Thank you, Dory. <laughs> um, and for those of you that haven't seen it and I'm trying to vary it up and show different plates. This is an example of one of my etching plates. Um, this is for a plate called Love Grows Here. And all the black that you see are lines that are engraved into the metal that I then print onto natural rag or handmade papers. And from the print, I do sell some black and whites, but for the most part, I go in with watercolors and I paint them. And I just thought this was a really appropriate piece for this time of year. Um, somehow I think the love grows here saying in that engraver's font loses any kind of saccharin and just holds a strength and talks, you know, talks to what we all need today, which is 
things that bring us joy and light with um, without sugarcoating the world. So I like the power of the three flowers and the watercolors, and that's how I make my work. And I also think it's appropriate because this is a big time of year for celebrations. I know we're all feeling like this grand opening is happening super, super fast. But at the same time, I know we're all anxious to celebrate the things that come up this time of year. And it tends to be a big time of year for graduations and weddings and engagements and babies. And so I thought I'd focus on some of that those occasion. And um, Marina just put she uh, that her daughter loved the piece I gave her. I love hearing that. Um, I'm going to start with one of my favorite little ones. I have a collection of little ones, also all originals, all hand painted. And I can't tell you out of a hundred and something designs why this is my favorite, but this is the one that resonates with me. And this is called Seize the Day. Ah, uh, 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 a little funny, but I just love it. I love the positive outlook. I love the optimism. Um, those of you who know my oversharing, I started a new life a few years ago, and this just really speaks to me. So I hung it in my bathroom. So it's the first thing I see in the morning as a reminder of joy. And it really does work. It gives me a smile. But I also think it's a perfect graduation gift. Um, something that I think, you know, charge somebody going out into the world um, with this message. Another one that I love for graduation is Sky's the Limit which I think is super cool. And if it is a Jewish occasion, we can go with flying chai. So it's the same piece, but with the chai in there. And some of you know that I inscribe my pieces. So right down here where I pencil sign, to the left, I can put a personal message and the name of somebody you're gifting this to. Another one of my all occasion pieces that I think would work a couple that would work great for graduations are one in a million and in safe hands. One in a million obvious is kind of obvious why it would work for so many people. And I love the message in that. And in safe hands features a hamsa, which is a cross-cultural symbol that offers prosperity, good things, but primarily safety. And I think again, such a great message for these times for somebody graduating that you wanna offer them safety and beautiful things. And the thing I love about the Hamsa is that it crosses cultural divides. And at a sad time where people are so divided, it's in Islam as the hand of Fatima, it's in Judaism as the Hamsa, it's in Christian cultures in Turkey and Greece as the hand of God. And it always means you're stopping evil. So why not? Um, and then lastly, for graduation message, particularly for women, I love my the world is her oyster. A little play on birth of Venus there. So a visual pun. And then for somebody of smaller stature, my favorite, because I'm only five feet, those of you know, I'm up on four stools to get tall enough so you could see me, um, is the Shakespeare quote. And though she be but little, she is fierce. And another thing I do that I haven't spoken about that much in an art party, is something called ketubot. And a ketubah is a Jewish marriage contract. Uh, and I'm gonna be really frank that the traditional one kind of makes my skin crawl a little because the man, it's traditionally a man and a woman, very traditional roles there. And the man is buying the woman. However, I do love the idea of a couple sealing the deal with a beautiful contract for their wedding. So what I do is I use some very modern egalitarian texts and this is actually one that's set to go out and it's, I'm not showing it in the frame because this gets signed at the wedding by the bride, the groom, two witnesses and a rabbi. So this goes out to the couple purchasing it, um, ready to be, and all this text is personalized with names, dates, where the wedding is. Um, and I offer reform, interfaith, secular humanist for people that don't believe in God. And also I have seven different same gender um, and non-binary texts that can work for these as well. And something I just started doing recently that I'm loving is a couple of people asked me um, for purely secular weddings, would I illuminate their vows in these backgrounds? And would I take the vows that they say to each other and put it up in this contract? And it's because it's kind of like an old illuminated manuscript. And I love looking at vintage illuminated manuscripts. And so it's 
the way they work is it's kind of like an old school menu where you get, I have all the different borders that I've painted and illustrated and then the different texts and you can kind of put any text with any border. And am I getting close to time or can I, should I keep going? You can, you're, well, we, you've got some time if you would like to keep going or I have a couple of questions. I love seeing the questions. See the <laughs> global influence. The YouTube just went down anyway. Uh -oh. Oops. <laughs> So, well, I, um, the one question I had was, I have started seeing the COVID babies in the grocery store. Has anybody else started seeing them? <laughs> I love babies? that you're calling them COVID babies. They're totally the COVID babies. And so I'm wondering about, you You had mentioned baby gifts, but it's- Yes, yes, yes. So in the little ones collection, again, the hand-painted pieces, which I love yeah, so much. Yeah. I have things like, if you wanted the moon, I have, the good night moon and this is just different framing with the same collection this frame is available with every piece and this can be personalized but something else i did was i designed an alphabet i designed an abc out of um i did one with flowers and this is the one i designed with animals cute and so, so it can be purchased as an abc for a kid's room but i think why not go personal and now i able to take the letters that I designed and turn them into name plaques. This is the flower alphabet. I think they're both perfect for a baby. Um, this one I think is great. The baby's gonna, child is gonna love it. I'm guessing till about six or so. Mm -hmm. And the thing about the flower letters that's so nice is I have teens that want this. So this is one of those baby gifts that takes the child you know, up into adulthood. And I'll research the, uh, the meaning of the name, or somebody could tell me who the child was named after the date of birth, and that can be put into there as well. Fabulous. And you know how carefully children look at the art on their walls. Like, I still remember every single thing I had on my wall, including the cracks in the ceiling and that kind of stuff. So oh, and let me show one. I also did it with the Hebrew alphabet, too. So oh, neat. So order the Jewish name. And then on the back, there's the legend, because oh. I wouldn't know without the legend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Carla. That was really, really fun. Thanks so much, Nora. I love the way you host. I'm getting a little more comfortable. I was freaked in the beginning, but I'm a little bit more comfortable. Couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah, right. You're very sweet. All right. So thank you so much for everyone. Um, that was the presentations um, in the main sense. Thank you to all of you artists. You're just so wonderful. You're such wonderful people and such wonderful creators. It's really great to see your stories. And this was seemed especially um, like we were seeing behind the scenes on a number of you. So that was really fun. Seeing your process is always so inspiring to me. It keeps me going, makes me feel like, oh, now I have the energy to go and do something myself. So that's wonderful. Um, I really appreciate that. And thank you to the people that have come. You're such wonderful, loyal, uh, great people to have in our lives. It's so great to see all of your faces. And it's just uh, been so sustaining to be able to do these um, parties with you guys. And just we appreciate you to the ends of the earth for real. Um, we, uh, before we draw the raffles, which I forgot to even mention in the beginning, we're going to do a raffle where each artist is going to give away a $50 gift certificate. And uh, so that is actually still going to happen. Just I didn't mention it because I was nervous. Um, but before we do that, I did want to just uh, thank you again and to talk about how important this has been for us and how much we would like to, even as things are opening up and we're feeling a little bit like we might start seeing each other in person, um, how much we also don't wanna lose the lessons and the things, the skills that we've learned from this whole past year. And in particular, we really feel like the Art Party Central is gonna continue to be very relevant even as, um, uh, creative parties, I mean, creative uh, shows start again, and that kind of stuff. We're thinking about how is it going to be that we're going to um, fuse the two and use them to enhance each other. 
and continue the conversations we have. And even when we were so looking forward to seeing all of you guys in the actual flesh, but it's amazing to me and thinking about that and how I was gonna to talk to you, I was realizing there are so many of you that I feel like I've known for years and I've never actually met you. It's just amazing to me. And so that's testimony to the power of this medium, I think. And I really hope that we continue to do it in various forms. And so we're gonna, we're thinking about ways of bringing you with us into some of the shows that we do behind the scenes or in the interstices of our moments and um, just continuing on. And cause not everybody's gonna be in the same place at the same time, even if we are in person again, going to shows and that sort of thing. So just stay tuned and um, stay with us and we'll stay with you and let's uh, continue on. So as always, if you follow us on social media, we really appreciate it. It helps our business and it helps our uh, morale. So don't forget to do that. And um, don't forget to tell your friends if you've had fun and bring them and uh, just keep on trucking. It's really, the, the weather is nice and the, um, the feelings are just, I feel very expansive the last few days and weeks. So it's been wonderful to still have a way of connecting with you all. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over. Have you uh, picked out the randomly drawn uh, winners there? Yes, my Did dear. All right. Yes, my dear. So with your ruby lips and your ruby glasses. Yes, to the end nails. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so before uh, announcing the winners, I just want to let you know, please put your um, email into the chat. If you don't feel like doing it uh, um, for everybody, you can directly uh, chat with me, um, admin, or one of us. And also, especially if your name doesn't correspond to your email or if, like, you know, it's a code or a number. So without further ado, I should get ready with some kind of tapping and, and music. Oh, right, right, to right. Unmute yourself if you'd like to, to uh, go hooray with her. I forgot uh, to say that too, so. Yes, please feel That's free to cheer for the winners. Okay, so the first winner is, oh, let me, oh, actually, you know what, I want to switch to gallery view so I can see everybody's face. That's, yeah. that's actually very, very I fun. love your look. It's fabulous. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> so today for Susan Schreck, uh, Julie, we have the winner is Abby Wallman uh, McLeroy. I hope I didn't butcher too much. Yay! <laughs> Yay. Congrats, Abby. And then for Gina Panorpi, we uh, the winner is Hilary Taylor. Yay! Yay! And then and then for Laura Jacklish, uh, Julie, we have Heidi Kaplan. Congrats! And then I love this name for uh, Rebecca uh, Scott from Shepherd's Run Jewelry, we have Brave Emma. Yay! Yay! And I can Not see the face there. That's you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's you. And then uh, for the last one is for Carl Agudon, and the winner is Laura Fisher from Raleigh. And I yeah. butcher your name. I know Laura. Sorry. <laughs> and yeah, drop me a line with your email so we can send you all the information. And also, Francesca. For Francesca, what about my mine? Crystal Cadada. Oh, did, oh, did, I, did I, I, I jump you? Sorry. Yeah, that's oh, okay. Oh, there is an extra winner then. It's Linda yes. Russell. <laughs> it's Linda Russell. Yay! Right. Yay, Woo. everyone. Woo. Congratulations, everyone. And uh, yes, drop me your email and I'll uh, jump back to, uh, to Nora. Yes. All right. So congratulations to everyone. And we are also, as always, sending you all home with 10% off to all of the websites, including me and Francesca. So that's Swan and Stone Millinery and Francesca Vitali. And um, so it's 10% off for the entire week. And so feel free to partake in uh, 
every way that you would like. Um, and let's see, what else are we going to do? So the coupon code that we need to give out, it'll be good, good until May 28th, and it is Art Party May 22, all capital letters, all one word. So Art Party May 22 is the code for your 10% off. And um, I would like to call your attention to the fact that we have two days of parties next week. One is on Tuesday and one is on Saturday. And we will be featuring Lauren Pacenti Jewelry, Maricol Bijou, Kay Lamberti Designs, Takara Designs, Shana Croy Jewelry, Joy Stember Metal Arts, Jennifer Lippman Bruno Design, Griffith and Evans Wood Jewelry, Eileen Schwartz Jewelry, Amy Canarak Design, Megan Patrice Riley Jewelry, and Marie Vancourt Jewelry. So you can RSVP in the usual way at the website of Art Party. So um, again, I would like to say thank you, thank you to Francesca. You're a wonderful co-host. Hey. Very wonderful. Thank you very much. And um, I think I can speak for all the artists by saying that you all are so wonderful and mean the world to us. So thank you again for coming. We know you're all busy. So if some of you need to drop off and go on with your life in the afternoon, you're welcome to do so. If you would like to stay on and ask some questions um, and see a few more things and hear a little bit more scuttlebutt, please do stay on. We're gonna move on to the after party section of the event. <laughs> Yes, and we have we had a lot of questions, so mm -hmm. I try yeah. to uh, jot them down. But um, so, do you want me to go ahead first yes, with the please. questions? Yes, please. If you have questions, that would be great. Yes. So, Gina, let me find you here so I can spotlight you. Okay, we had uh, here. You are. We had. Um, Top uh, uh, from oh, uh, Dory would it, uh, wanted to know if you make any form fitting tops. So the more uh, structured pieces that I'm doing right now are this uh, hemp and linen variety, and so it has a structured collar. It looks pretty boxy on this mannequin, um, but in terms of uh, like the fabric and being a structured piece, this would definitely be. Uh, the most structured that I make. So it has a side bend. And then these are little cap sleeves that come out. And Dory, if there's anything that you want to try, um, I am happy to send things with a return label. I know it's difficult to purchase clothing online. And so that is op an option as well. Okay. Do you do anything in the batik that's form fitting? Um, this is actually batik. So any patterns okay. that you see that you're interested in can be made in this style gotcha. piece. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's Perfect. a little bit more fluid, but everything else is a little bit more fluid just because of the silk, but this anything, any pattern can be made in that kind of fabric. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we had, uh, Marina wanted to see, are there dresses in the back? Yes. So these are um, three quarters. So it's the same sort of top, this um, kind of 1920s, it's not a bag, I forget what the style of it is, but because uh, because the batiks take so long, I really keep the designs pretty simple. Um, that shirt that I just showed Dory is kind of moving into more structure. So if I back up, uh, you can see here that this comes to me just below the knee. So it's a little three quarter, comes to kind of mid shin for most people. Oh, and then again, it's reversible. How tall are you? That's a uh, I'm about five, three in the four <laughs> on a good day. So, you know, it, it's, I'm a, I'm a non, I'm sort of in the middle. I'm not very tall, but you can, they look beautiful on long lanky people. And I call it the Mediterranean bod that I'm sporting. So I like this rounded, more short person with a short waist. It works if you're into this like fluid, you know, more fluid style. And then we have one more question, uh, actually two more questions. One is from Michal, she wanted to know if you have new dresses and um, and then do you want the other question right away or you want to answer first this one? 
Um, I think it was more excitement, maybe. I don't know, Nicole. And then the, the last one is Laurie wants to see again the long sleeves. Um, the shirt dress. Yeah. Yes, yeah. shirt dress. Yeah. So this is a new, um, the new piece that I've been working on. It has pockets. It comes, I'm doing them size. This is the large, extra large, and it's quite big on me. There is uh, this really great collar and an open v-neck. It's the sample, so it doesn't have buttons currently. Um, that is something. And then for those of you who like coverage, which I hear a lot about, um, everyone <laughs> thinks I make crop tops, but um, this goes all the way down below the butt. <laughs> That's beautiful. Very. Beautiful. I haven't shown my knees in decades. <laughs> <laughs> What's next to that mannequin? What's next to her? This is here? Yes. That is um, a tank top. So it's the shorter version of the longer piece that I showed earlier. So I make that in two lengths. So um, this is kind of mid with the adjustable bows on the, on the ties on top, similar to this very plain one here. And that is in the viscose and silk, which I have pictured, but will be put up on my website. Uh, in the next sort of few, That's few days in a week. That's yeah, perfect. it's a really gorgeous fabric. And Michal actually um, said uh, if she wasn't uh, looking for new dresses, but uh, uh, sure. the new shirt. The new, the new shirt. Yeah, I think she was talking about the long sleeve. Okay. This then, long sleeve baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. Then, can Thank I you. Krista. You would say I'm the one who was replaced. Okay, here. Hi, Krista. Um, so Marina wanted to know if the timeless uh, bag will be yes. done with Deep in the new collection, and and Lori wants to know when the new new collection will be available. Okay, giddy up. In other words, so the timeless tote right? Maybe um not maybe it'll be in new materials um soon. Um, the new collection will be um in June, probably like the second week of June. So um, if you, yeah, I'll announce it on my newsletter and social media or whatever, just follow me and yeah, you'll be notified 100%. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, okay. Then for uh, Rebecca, let me uh, replace. So Rebecca, for you, I have two questions. One mm -hmm. is, Please post the Mercury um, hearing as soon as possible. No, post it on your website. They, they want to have those hearings. And then the other question is, right, Dori, she wants to know if you do uh, smaller earrings in the range of one, one inch, one and a half. Yes, I can, I can make, I can adapt any design to any size. I can scale it up, scale it down. I make everything from scratch, so size absolutely isn't an issue. And yes, these will be on my website, hopefully later today. Good, Nora, if you have other questions, these are the one that I, I jotted down. Okay, um, let us see. Those were, I was sort of writing down the same ones. Let's see. Um, does anybody else have any actual oh, questions? I just, I just wanted to ask um, because so when Crystal, when you were showing that bag, someone, Marina just wanted to know real quickly if it yeah. comes with a zip. I don't know if you saw that. So if you could just answer. So, so the question about the zipper. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it, it just, it just has a zipper in the front, but it goes all the way end to end and it has the closure. Um, there's a snap closure. And so basically it's just one zipper, but there's also a magnetic snap on the back, but the one zipper um, is here. And then if you wanted to also add that extra zipper, you can just, um, there's, yeah, I have the, the, sorry, the runway wristlet, which you can detach. And this actually goes as a set. Um, like you can do it like that. And then it has also a top zipper. And then you take this clasp here and you put it. And so it's now connected to this, like to the tote. So it adds like that extra zipper. Um, so that's like one option to do, but it's just technically just one zipper at the time this tote comes. Does that answer? Question? 
I ha I did have a question actually for Suzanne that just um, had popped into my head earlier and I didn't, I forgot to ask. And that is um, with weddings and um, celebrations that are starting to pop up, have you um, ever done and would you um, be open to doing sort of uh, connected designs for groups of people? So something I was thinking about, because so many of your, um, the stitching pieces that sort of go into each other could be sort of adapted to be slightly different for say a wedding party. And have you ever worked with groups like that? And would you, how would it work? I, I haven't, but um, actually like bridal is something that really intrigues me mm -hmm. um, because like, I, I guess, you know, like, in like when when I got married I was always looking for something a little bit um different so that would be a situation where you know someone would um contact me and we would uh you know work together but yes like with the stitching um it could be you know we could create like little differences um you know with with the pearls you know I'm mm -hmm. wearing uh, one pearl, but you know, we could do it with different colors, um, earrings. So Those yeah, pearls. Pearls. thank you for asking. Yeah. <laughs> My mind's going now with the stitching. Yeah. I can <laughs> see it with in hair too, like especially those pearls because something about the way the pearls drape around the neck I could see something where it goes into, you know, how they have fancy hairdos and I could see them dribbling down. I yeah. like that. Yeah, something of it, because they're so fluid and uh, sensual already. I could really see it being beautiful on a bride. Anyway. I think I like that. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? You know what, Susan? Somebody earlier wanted to see the, the filming, the, the, the hands, the face behind the filming. <laughs> my that was my daughter. And I told her that, you know, I was asking her to do it. And she actually just had some surgery on her finger. And I promised her that I would not show her off. Oh, can you, can, can you do so it privately? Oh. <laughs> can you do it privately? I'd love to see her. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's funny. I don't even... You mean privately like her live or a picture? <laughs> a live, but a picture would do. Because we talk about her all the time and I've never seen her. I know. Maybe <laughs> maybe I can get her on... Oh, you, you won't be on the second one. Yeah, it, it was a it was a promise. It was a big ask, especially <laughs> since she just had the finger surgery. <laughs> As a mom of a shy girl, I can tell you that my daughter will pay me if I do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't see any other questions, but uh, there was you... one question, and I don't know, but for Laura, somebody had been asking about if they have wood. Could they send it to you? I don't know if that means if it's something that they have that's in. That uh, was actually me because that would be. Oh, was it you? Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. I mean, I have a certain kind of minimum size requirements um, because I do you need to make a block um, of a certain size because I'm cutting on the bandsaw. So fingers are an issue when we get too, too small there. Um, but basically anything that's, I think the minimum would be about like two inches by one inch. I could work on something and, you know, people send me wood all the time that they're just like, hey, you know, I found this in my garage. Do you think you could make something out of it? Or, you know, I have this piece from a piece of furniture that's broken or anything like that. I would definitely love to work with people's first that's, small yeah that's cool and also there was uh i don't know many comments uh, carla on uh, on all the pieces that the moms have received for um mother's day everybody every mom loved them that's uh we got so many of those comments i hope you can read all the the chats there were a lot you made a lot of happy moms <laughs> that makes me so happy <laughs> i love that well, while you're in the spotlight, can I ask you a question? And I apologize because I'm a little late to the party. So if you covered it, then skip over it. But 
Um, I know you do special pieces for, um, I'm just going to re-spotlight Carla instead of me because I just came from lacrosse games. Don't look at me. I'm like Suzanne's daughter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you do anything special for um, engagements? I know we saw your plaques for, for bedrooms, which my girls have and love, but can you tell us about what you do for engagements? Yeah, very similarly, um, original art that I love to personalize. Um, I really like to make it as custom as possible um, with putting names, but some of the more general things that I think work, this is one of my favorites. Um, it says entwined. So I really like that it's symbolic of the idea of the union between two people. I also love that it's not gender specific. Um, Another one I have it uses the Yid, my favorite Yiddish word, which is the shirt, which means you found your soulmate. And this I just love. And I actually, on request, I just put these two birds into one of my larger tree of life for a couple. It's two women that want to signify their family and their tree of life. So we did two female birds. Um, another are anything again um, from the little ones collection. So we've got meant to be if you want to go super sweet. Um, I have the I do birds. This is bride bride. I have groom bride. I have groom groom. Um, one of my favorites, but again, this is a love hate situation is the anatomical heart with the Jewish word for love the Hebrew word for love under it. Ahava. And then we've got love birds. And because so many people ask me a lot with the sizing and I have to make a whole new plate, I don't always carry a lot of things in a lot of sizes, but I love those entwined flowers so much. I did them, um, I did them in the small size as well. Thank you, that's awesome. And we have the lovebirds, I just wanted to say. <laughs> I love birds. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. You're so welcome. So I think we may have come to the end of this party. Sadly. Could you try a try a hat on for me? Oh, it's yes. right behind you. Um on your left hand side. Okay, on my left hand side. Which one, what color is it? Um it's next to the one that you're wearing. Oh, right. So yes. Yeah. This one? Yes. Ah. All right, so I'll hold it up for you to see. These are, um, it's got these, uh, this is one of my favorite things to do with feathers. I call them deco feathers. I cut them so that they sort of have this vaguely art deco rhythmic effect. And here we go. That's lovely. It's really comfortable too on, I have to say. That's in straw, right? It's a straw, yes. It's a straw, it's sort of, it's a very interesting, um, it's pink, but it's not really pink. It's like a maybe brick, kind of a very faded brick color and black. Again, the rhythm of the pattern of the straw and the pattern on the feathers sort of echoes each other. That's great, that's a great piece. 20s, uh, updated 1920s maybe. Yeah. What era does it remind you of? It's hard to, anyway, there you go, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. It's really been fun. And thank you for putting up with me and my- uh... Good job, you were yes. great. <laughs> you were wonderful. You did a great job, yeah. Oh, I love this one, sorry. Happy party, Happy everyone. Party. Yes. Have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll Bye, be everybody. back again at 5.30 if anybody uh, is a glutton for punishment. <laughs>